Hey kids, welcome to another quick little math video. This is for fifth grade, module five, lesson nine, application problem. And um, it's got, you know, kind of a think about it approach instead of solving, which is sometimes nice if you like to do work in your head and sometimes not nice if you like to do work on paper. So <clears throat> the objective for this lesson, kind of the objective regularly is finding volume, using the formula, building things, taking them apart. Recently in our lessons, uh, see my other videos if you want to uh, check out what we've been doing. Oh, and click subscribe, come back again, of course, because I am trying to help you guys with your math. Um, but on previous videos, we talked about number bonds and how they are the factors of the products that you're trying to solve. So taking a number apart or taking the product apart into factors can really be helpful, as is the case with this problem. So here we have the chart below shows the dimensions of various rectangular packing boxes. If possible, answer the following without calculating the volume. Now I do have some students who will say, I just wanna calculate the volume. And you know what? I think I probably was one of those too. I would just look at this and go, well, I can calculate it. Look, they're all there. And then you would have the answers in front of you and I am not gonna stop you. If you wanna do that, you go right ahead. However, there are ways to do it without calculating. So let's talk about those. First of all, try to find the basic or the one that would be in these to compare. When I talk about the one, it would be something that you could compare to like this is double that or this is half of that. So the one in this case would be the book box at a 12, 12, 12. If you don't understand what I'm talking about with the one, just hang in there, bear with me. If I have a 12, 12, 12, and I look at all the other boxes, I notice they all have a 12. So what that does is it kind of eliminates a 12 from each of these because they all have the same formula, length times width times height. And if I'm comparing and I'm trying to, say for A, try to find the greatest volume, then comparing 12s to each other, that's not gonna help me solve my problem. What I wanna do is I wanna compare these numbers to the other ones that are different so that I can reason a little bit. So um, for A, which box will provide the greatest volume? Now that I have the 12s out of the way, I'll be comparing the 12 to 36, or 12 to nine, or 12 to six. So something should jump right out at you right now, and just in saying 36, nine, and six, you might say, okay, well 36 is more than 12, and nine and six are less. Yes, true. Lock that in, come back to it in a moment. Compared with this 12, I've got 36, okay, that's greater, 48, that's even greater, and 24, a little bit greater. So now it's about which one's greater and by how much. So let's start looking at my top one, the picture box. If I'm comparing 36 to 12, well, 36 is 24 more. And I can do that twice because it's got 24 more in two places. How about this one? Well, I'm going down from the 12 by three. So I know we don't use negative numbers so much in fifth grade, but if you think of going down as negative, that's really all there is to it. So I'm, it's negative three right here to have the nine when compared with 12. But if I go up to 48, well, that's gonna bump me up by quite a bit. So it's gonna go up by 36. But the collective total of the lamp box will not have as great of an increase as the picture box. And so now it's really easy to look at the flat. I don't even have to bother with that really. It goes six less here and it's only double there for the 24 compared to 12. So if you wanna uh, write it in, you can but you can clearly see that the one that has the greatest volume is the picture box. So the picture box has the greatest. Okay. 
okay, because of your ability to compare the numbers in the length width height and look at where we have more collective inches, okay? There are more collective, that means like all together, inches in the picture box. All right, now move on to the next one because there is work on the back, surprise! Maybe not necessarily a surprise. Which box has a volume that is equal to the volume of the book box? And how do you know? Okay, so let's take a look at that book box, which is the top one. It's the 12, 12, 12. And so which one is going to be equal and how would you know? So again, just reasoning. So if I look at the numbers that I created here, this is kind of your cheat sheet. If you look at the, I want something equal. Okay, well clearly this is just getting bigger and bigger. So that's not gonna work. We need something that's gonna have smaller and, uh, and potentially larger or the same. So this one goes smaller and bigger. And then this one gets smaller and bigger. But the key here is to look at the amounts by which they are changing. So if you look at the amount that goes down and the amount that it goes up, and if I'm trying to kind of have this baseline, remember the one that I'm working with, if I go down by six, that's going down by half. If I go up by 12, that's, or up to 24, I'm going up by 12, that's double. If you half and you double, you're, you're basically undoing yourself. So when you look back here and you have to write your explanation, talk about the 12, 12, 12, compared with 12, 6, and 24. And point out that the 6 is half, the 24 is double. These offset, so the name of the, it is the flat, the flat, flat is equal to the book box. Okay, and that's how, you know, you're gonna explain it. It's about this offsetting, you're comparing the numbers and you don't have to calculate it to find out. Okay, takes us to the last one. Really awkward right here. <laughs> this is awkward. I don't even know if they intended to do this, but this is this one is just weird. Which box is one third the volume of the lamp box? Okay, now let's think reasonably here. If we have the lamp box, okay, we've got 12, 9, and 48. And we need something that is going to be one third the volume. So it's going to be smaller. Well, we already know that the picture box is the biggest one. So you can eliminate that right away because I need something that's going to be a lot smaller. So just rationalizing and reasoning, you can say, I don't have to think about this one. The other two choices are the book box and the flat, which um, if you look here, we have the book box and the flat, and they are equal. So maybe we won't have one box that will be the one third of the volume of the lamp box. Don't know if they really considered that, but the strategy to solve this is maybe not what you would think of. Let's put the lamp box dimensions on our paper. So 12, 9, 48. 12, 9, 48. And you know the book box, the BB, 12, 12, 12. And this is the lamp. Be sure and label your work, it will help you. And then the flat, that one of course was the 12, 6, and 24. So let's work this out and I'll show you what happens here when we try to figure this out using their strategy, okay? And teachers too, like I know sometimes teachers will watch these and I, I would just be scratching my head if I hadn't uh, really investigated this myself. So first of all, 
back to the first step that we did when we started. They all have 12, so just eliminate that. When we have something that is the same, it does not help you to compare if they're all the same. Take it out. That works in a lot of other test questions too. Now we can compare the numbers that are left. 9 and 48, 12 and 12, and 6 and 24. So the strategy here to find out what these boxes are made of is to factor or work out the numbers that you can multiply to get these. What do I mean by factor? Watch. Take 9 apart. What numbers multiply to get 9? Well, 3 and 3. 3 and 3 are prime numbers. So I'm going to stop my factor tree or my, my uh, number bond. I'm going to stop it right here. 48, well, 6 times 8 is 48. I know these two. Uh, it's an easy fact to remember. They, it rhymes. 6 times 8 is 48. But neither 6 nor 8 is a prime number, so I have to keep factoring. 2 times 3 is 6. Now I'm finished with those. And then 8 can be uh, 2 times 4. 2 is prime, so we're going to stop there. And then 4 is a 2 times 2. So now I am all factored out, and I have all these numbers that are going to stop my factor tree, so I'll leave those there for a moment. How about 12 times, tw or, uh, the 12 and the 12? So I'm going to take my 12 and I'm going to do 6 times 2. Stop there. 3 times 2 makes 6. So I have 3, 2, 2. Do the same here. Stop at the primes. Factor the numbers that can be multiplied. Okay. Keep your work organized so it'll help you think. And here I've got 6 and 24. So 6 right away, you know it's a 2 times 3. You know that we have prime numbers and you know you get to stop. 24, you can do whatever you want. You can do 12 times 2. You can do 6 times 4. Let's do 6 times 4 for funsies. And a 2 and a 3. And a 2 and a 2. And so back to the question. You know how I am. I read the question like a bunch of times. Which box is one-third the volume of the lamp box? So how do, I, how do I compare this? What does all this mean? Why don't we lay it out, and it might help you see it if we lay it out. So I've got 3, 3, 2, 3, 2, 2, 2. Okay, those are all my factors. And now I'm going to lay these out. I've got 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2. And in the same order, you can mix them up, remember, because when you multiply, you can use the commutative property, 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2. Now, again, the, the book box and the flat are the same. That's why all these factors are the same. But this one seems to have an extra digit. What is the extra digit? Hmm. So 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, same. 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2. What is the extra number? It's a 3. So this whole thing, they're saying which box is one-third the volume of the lamp box, both the book box and the flat are one-third of the lamp box. The lamp box is three times these amounts. So what you don't see in this method that they like to encourage in the teacher's edition is you don't see the one-third, but you do see three times. So that's the key there. It's very, very complicated. I don't really know any fifth graders who would actually get this without the help of some sort of direction saying this is factoring and this is what you need to do. Anyway, super tough problem. I hope this video is helpful. Again, the magic extra three. Click subscribe, come back. Hope to see you on another video. Bye for now.